Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Hearthstone Singapore Major. My name is TJ. Once again, I am joined by Lothar. Lothar, the, match, the last match was like 20 minutes long total. I don't think it was even 20 minutes. It's probably even shorter. If you just cut out the moments when they had to pick the decks yeah. and an example think about the mulligans, yeah. <laughs> it would have been like 10 minutes maybe. The gameplay itself was like 4 minutes long. So Yeah. That was ridiculous when you think about it. But yeah. we have the next challengers. Yeah, we are halfway through the day so far. Four matches in, four matches to go. And the next match, of course, is Tom 60229 versus <laughs> Chonger. I had to put the 60229 okay. uh, after there. But he's referred to as Tom by, by most of the people that know him, most of his peers. And we're actually already jumping right into the match oh, here. Wow, that's brief. Yeah. I mean, that's quick. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so um, let's just jump into the game and to analyze everyone is playing the paladin with uh, with Murloc. yeah it's an interesting choice but uh, everyone loses with it <laughs> yeah because everybody that they're playing against is playing fast decks that punish the uh, the style of the Murloc paladin yeah it's like um i have seen if i'm not mistaken four games today with this paladin mm -hmm. and every single time it lost yeah <laughs> every right. single time that is not a good win rate but yeah let's give these guys a brief introduction tom of course a player who resides in Taiwan. And he was um, top 16 in World Championships in 2014, if I recall cor correctly. That is correct. And uh, his last appearance against a European-based player wo who was life coach was in the finals of Celestial Invitational. Yeah. And uh, before that, he's, he's actually probably the most decorated player in this entire major. Uh, he took uh, first place in the... ONOG Summer Circuit event, which was a, a, a premier event or a major event as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then he also took first in the, uh, the ASUS ROG 2015 as oh well. Yeah. So that was also um, a premier tournament. So, you know, two premier tournament victories plus a top 16 finish at a world championship, like you mentioned, is a very good career for this, for this Hearthstone player. Very true. And his overall life winnings are around $36,000 right now. Yeah, which is... Intense. And Chonga, real quick, he's a, a Malaysian player and plays for M8. Uh, he may not be known to a lot of people, but if you play on the anti ladder, you've probably played against Chonga quite a few times because he spams the ladder a lot. He has quite a few top 100 finishes, and he's usually one of the first players on the North American server to hit Legend. So, um, so like the um, local version of Xixo. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The, the Southeast Asian Xixo. So you always see him at, at very high ranks very early in the season. So, um, yeah. Definitely a strong player in his own right, and he's made it this far. We are now in the round of 16 of the winner's bracket. Yes, this is the winner's bracket, so the, the player that loses in this match is still not out. Yeah. It's an interesting situation now for um, for Chonger, because even if he plays the Doomsayer, it just guarantees that, that it dies. Yeah. Because you attack first with the weapon, it boosts the attack from the, uh, from the Frozen Berserker to 4, and then that's seven. Yeah. And that's about it. So you probably don't want to do that. <laughs> Your other options are Glides of Pain. And that's about it. You just draw and heal yourself for free. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Uh, it's a little bit of a rough situation. He can throw out Double Doomsayer. Double Doomsayer seems okay. There's no chance unless your opponent uses Executes on those. Yeah. Then it's uh, super dangerous. It, it's a lot of resources seemingly used for Farley Berserker, but you can't let the Farley Berserker get out of hand. It just mm -hmm, It's mm -hmm. one of the r ways that Patron Warrior wins this match. I and mean, we actually saw it earlier where if you let a board, a reasonably sized board, hit you a couple times early on, that adds up. Adds hmm. up over time. What do you think about one whirlwind into battle rage? Because you have almost no way of removing those minions unless you will hit and execute from the top of the deck with the three two draws right now. Yeah. But I still think it's the best way, even if you don't get the execute. Yeah. And no execute picked up, but uh, still going to be able to push some damage as well. That's one of the things that this play also does. It allows you to at least get some value out of the Froth and Berserker before it dies. Mm -hmm. A horrible, horrible Doomsayer death. If only there was a chance of getting the like Inner Rage here would change anything. You get one of the more Whirlwind. Now it still will be not enough to clear it. Just one damage shot. Yeah. Well, that means that this Frozen Berserker will die, but it will get more damage in. I'm, I'm kind of surprised by the second whirlwind, to be honest. Whoa. Because that's only three damage. 
It's a sinister strike. Yeah, it's a sinister strike that has a lot more utility. Yeah. In this deck, overall, in overall, right? <laughs> it so is a very interesting choice, but maybe Tom just realizes that this matchup is all about damage. Damage, <laughs> just hitting your opponent in the face. Hit him thirty times with small punches, or hit him once with yeah. thirty. Yeah. With the new, not released yet, minion who I just forgot the name. Yeah. What was the name? The the blob one that makes blood. There's like two blobs, blood. and they make one really huge minion. I don't know. Blood Abomination? I have no idea. Who knows? Not me. No one used it yet. Yeah. No biggie. I'll learn eventually. But this is still a lot of damage being pushed. Yeah, it's a lot. When you think about it. And a death bite in the hand. <laughs> that's another eight damage over the course of two yeah, turns. That's that's a fireball and a half. <laughs> I mean, less than a half, but you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. There's a lot of damage coming to uh, Chunker's face. And I don't suspect that there will be any trades made. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't think we'll even. I, I mean, can he even get to land hands? Probably not. Like I, li I like how Tom is playing this. He's really aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine he just smack face with both of these, and that's exactly what he does. Not really worried about that that uh, wild pirate manager because it's going to give him armor if it dies. If it doesn't die, then he's probably just going to win the game with the death bites that he has. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll see here, though. He, he doesn't want to give too many draws with the Accolade of Pain. He, he wants to keep in the back of his mind what happens if he plays a heal bot. What happens if he plays an, an, a lay on hands? My god, a second battle rage. Yikes. And That's ridiculous. He doesn't even care about cards. He said, here, have some cards. Yeah. I see mean, if I care. Your opponent is playing a control deck. Even if he has like five or seven cards in his hand, he will probably use one or two each yeah. turn. So... Yep. Why not just give him cards when you can draw your cards yourself when you know you're the more more efficient deck? Yeah. Is a double inner rage to finish off the game next turn? Yeah. Uh, it looked like he actually used. Oh, never mind. I was thinking about using it this turn, but yeah. then you're weak to. Oh, nice. Well, that one card draw was actually. You know. Yeah. Needed. <laughs> yeah, that would, that actually ends up being the the difference here. He's trying to give him some armor, but it's not nearly enough armor to you know be able to defend against uh, anything can happen later on in the game. Um, Still not enough to handle the pressure because Doctor Boom will just sla being slammed down. Grom off Boom the top though. Down. Grom off the top. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! No way. That's game. No way that has happened. No way. Wow, Tom just nodding his head in approval of his decisions early on. Wow. Very aggressively played, and he's rewarded for his aggression with a victory. Very well played, I would say. I mean, the, the win that uh, I thought about it, I thought about it more, right? Yeah. It, it was a sinister strike, but without that whirlwind, he wasn't able to, ki uh, to kill his opponent right now. Yeah. So, and it, uh, it ended up muttering a lot. Yeah. Really liked his decision uh, overall in this game. Actually, Being very aggressive. He had double inner rage, so it didn't matter. <laughs> well, the double inner rage was only plus two damage. F it would be up over 14, though, and he was at 11. But without the whirlwind, that would be 14. Oh, oh yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so. Never mind. But if he didn't draw that second inner rage, if that second inner rage was any other card, then it would have mattered a lot. So I, I, I agree with you. I really like that line of play. Um, but, you know, sometimes you just get the right draws at the right time. And, and you play against game. a Murloc Paladin. And you play against a Murloc Paladin. What is that, 0-5 now? Yeah, it's 0-5, and, and, and uh, Chunger is sticking to it. So, will he be punished again? And the Murloc Paladin will not see a win today at all. All right, well, as of now. I think this is going to be close to a punish. Uh, just because I really like the Temple Mage. In this matchup. And it has Arcan Blast. Yeah. So it's a different version. Yeah, Water Elemental is not as good, I don't think, but it does block True Silver Champion, which is a you know a key removal mm -hmm. for the Murloc mm -hmm. Paladin. It's just not quite as sticky as the Piloted Shredder, which is usually what it's uh, what it replaces in the Temple Mage deck. Um, because after a board clear, you're still left with something of Piloted Shredder. It also represents more attack. So there are trade-offs. True, true. But I like the Water Elemental against uh, classes that have... Some weapons, and Paladin is one of those. You, you just have to think how much Truce of a Champion is actually hurting me. 
Is it a problem? Or is it something that will just, you know, ignore? Yeah. And just go through with the burst that mm -hmm. I can do. And I think the burst will be more important. Like, getting a Frostbolt will be more important. Getting second man of <laughs> mad scientist is also ridiculous when you think about it. That's a pretty nice hand, if I do wow. see so myself. Wow. Source's Apprentice also makes it quite nice. Ooh. He's getting greedy with yeah. the second man of him. I just, I, I would have just coined that out. Why not? You have two, you have two drops. Um, maybe looking for a spell to, because yeah, because. Well, he's playing around a Doomsayer this way. True. Yeah, that's very true. It's a good point. It's probably exactly what he's playing around. So let's see. <laughs> if only he would have a unstable portal or a frostbolt that would have been perfect yeah. but fortunately unfortunately for tom he has a good draw but not the good draw that he needs in current situation yeah so um mad scientist and coin sorry Ma man of them coin mad scientist because you need the damage on board and you know that the pyramids will kill your minions anyway <sighs> probably will even trade with the pyromancer at that point because you don't want to risk any kind of removal uh, in the form of, let's say... Well, Consecration can be even played now, and, but a quality as good as, good as it gets. Oh! No trade! Uh, this might be really painful for Tom. He will lose two... two men of them yeah. for the quality. Also, the Mad Scientist ends up becoming a big liability because if it brings out Mirror Entity, then Doomsayer can just be played into Mirror Entity. Yep, and if it is Mirror Entity, because yeah. it might not be. And then that becomes a guaranteed board clear, effectively. Justice. Just because there's no way that you can counter a Doomsayer mm -hmm. that you have because it procs at the start of your turn. So. And it's most likely Mirror Entity because the secret was not procced after the death of the Sosa's Apprentice. And there's the counterspell in the hand, so yeah. It seems as if... It is mere entity. Could hmm. be vaporized. Well, if this paladin gonna win, it's just because he drew a Dr. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He had a Dr. Boom last game. Just didn't have enough time to play it. Wow, he's actually gonna get greedy here. Well, he's allowed to. He's at 27 HP. Yeah. It's quite nice. I would say Arcan Intellect here, because if you overdraw. Uh, uh, sorry, if you overcommit to the board with the uh, Conjurer. Then you're just giving away uh, your board position. You know there's a Truce of a Champion already on board, and Arcan Intellect for two mana is actually really important. Yeah. Duplicate. Ooh. So that's nice as well. Yeah. <laughs> Second. So not only does, does he have Doomsayer and a mere entity to, to throw it down into, he also has Wild Pyromancer inequality. So Tom is not going to be able to build a board at all this game. What Tom can do is d he can duplicate um, Dr. Paul. Whoa. He could. See if that, if or, that, if that you know, a boom bot. <laughs> well, it depends what the, does your opponent do. If he will keep the weapon to attack into the boom bot, then yeah. yes, for sure. And if you wild pyromancer consecrate um, a Dr. Boom with duplicate up, the Dr. Boom is what gets duplicated. Right, because yep. it was the yep. first creature that spawned. Yes. The boom bots are the battle cry that come out after it. Correct. Doctor Boom for Chonga, right? Oh, oh. he played. A, oh, he played around the second mirror entity. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I well, mean, you can't. You can't really risk giving your opponent a Doctor Boom. So. I don't know. Hmm. I I, th I think it's I think it's a smart play. So what do you want to have? More um, Flame Wakers or more Dr. Booms or Bombs? And probably Bombs. Or so more Archmage and Tinnitus. Uh, I think the Flame Waker is actually the most interesting one here. Yeah. Archmage and Tinnitus is a novelty. In Whoa! Okay. I, I actually said that as a joke. <laughs> I wasn't expecting him to actually go through with it. When is Tom going to have time to play arc multiple Archmage Antonitis plus know. spells? I really don't know. Well, y you saw that your opponent used already one equality. Hmm, interesting. Tom's a bold player. I like that about him. 
He's not afraid to make the tough decisions. And by tough decisions, I mean going face when nobody else would go face and playing Archmage Antonidas into duplicate when nobody else would play Archmage Antonidas into duplicate. I mean, Flame Waker is such a great card. Yeah, right? it, it, re it really is. Especially in this matchup, because a lot of times uh, this version from Chong is a little bit different because it looks like it's more minion focused mm -hmm, uh, with Dr. Mm -hmm. Boom. There, I wouldn't even be, even be surprised if there's shielded mini bots or even muster for battle uh, in this deck. Um, but normally, you're, you're not really faced up with much minion. So a lot of times, the damage that you get from Flame Wakers can just go to face, and you can snowball the game out of control and kill the, the Murloc Paladin before they're able to get to those those Murlocs. True. We haven't, we haven't actually correct. seen a single Murloc this game, have we? No, we didn't. Um, but there's Al Aldo Peacekeeper, which will be the MVP if Dr. Boom is, is going to get played this turn. Now the uh, Ant uh, Archmage Antonidas are kind of useless. Because they just die to the Dr. Boom, right? Yeah. It is going to allow him to get some fireballs, but I don't know if he's going to be able to close out the game with that, especially since he's facing down a Dr. Boom at the moment. Remember that there's one uh, still secret up, and it's a counter spell. Counter spell. Follows the rule, is it? Strong board being built up here by Chonger. Uh, Dr. Boom will eat on the fireball that was generated by the, the Alchemist on Tinnitus last turn. But that's about it. What else do you do? Do you play... Oh, Flame Cannon is useless right now. So, Flame Waker, Fireball, Unstable Portal. Huh. Oh, uh, why would you use this one? It's better to... Yeah. Use the one generated by Archmage Antonidas so yeah. your opponent doesn't know what actually did you draw this turn. Tom's just whipping out cards from his hand. Truce of a champion. Very quickly. It's a lot of damage being built up here. And the counter spell will eat a spell for four mana. And the counter spell was actually played for two, so a huge tempo gain right now. Yep. And uh, what else can we say about this situation? You probably want to say um, to save the boom bots for to a moment when the, your opponent will actually play minions on board, so you get additional um, additional means of to trade yep. with the board. At the same time, you didn't see any flame wakers, and I would in, in Chonger's situation, I would have assumed that he would have played flame waker instead of Antonidas and Ten Seven. Yeah. So there were only two chances of drawing another. Um, under the Flame Waker. Let's see what we're gonna happen. Two bombs are still alive. It's probably better to unsable the portal first because... Oh! Pagel! Oh, wow, look at that. One bomb still alive. Alright, well that's a full clear and a Pagel coming out. And Tom still does have that Archmage Tinnitus and a Dr. Boom. And Chonger has yet to play a Murloc, oh my and he has God. both anything can happen. So, <laughs> there That's is a rough. realistic possibility that Tom, from this point, just runs away with the game. What? What? <laughs> Look at him, he's like, what the heck? <laughs> what just happened? I mean, was that that just because he was sure he played some Murlocs? He <laughs> 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 He's just stone cold face. Look at him right now. He he, he didn't even like blink an eye when he yeah. did that. I'm really surprised. Wow. Maybe he did that on purpose. I well, don't know. there's a Murloc. Well, now it's not going to help him at all. Yeah. I mean, if he had like w he would have thought that he has like one local warrior and a war leader. But that's not the case. Uh, did he even play any Murlocs last game? He did play one War Leader last game. He played one War Leader last game. Last game, But he yes. didn't even play anything with Charge. So where is he thinking those Murlocs were coming from? I don't know, man. Interesting situation, I would say. Yeah. Uh, the Zombie Chow will eat another bomb, I would say. Unless he wants to play... No, Lancelot Portal is just better. Yeah. Gonna start generating these fireballs. Both the qualities have been used. So he knows that this Archimedes Antonidas is just not going to get dealt with. So I think this is just going to be game over from here. 
and the uh, duplicated Archmage Antonidas ends up, you know, coming out, coming out on top. And there's a wall eater, but that's it. Wow. I mean, he could have played the zombie channel the turn when he played uh, anything can happen for zero f effect. Yeah. So um, alongside a hero power and uh, either way, he loses that game. Probably there was still no chance of making a comeback. But wow, what a game! Yeah. <laughs> I didn't catch it at all again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a uh, that was an interesting game. But that means uh, Tom is up two to zero. Two to zero, and the paladin is six zero. Oh. Sorry, 06. 06. 06 in this tournament in general. I'd like to see the stats from the matches that are happening off stream for the Murloc battle. Well, Chonger uh, had to have won with this. Since this is the winner's bracket round of 16, he had to have won with that Murloc battle, you know, at least once. I doubt it was banned every single game up until this point. Probably. I would say that he so it, it wasn't. Maybe he was thinking back to one of his matches yesterday where he played all of his Murlocs, <laughs> and somehow he got caught up in, in that, but... Um, yeah, looks like we're jumping into game number three here. Tom's going to throw out the Zoo Warlock, and Chonger's going to throw out the Freeze Mage. Should be a decent matchup for Chonger in this, this Should one. Should be. Should be. Uh, but at the same time, if Tom is running a low tap and Owl in his deck, there's a chance that he might just, you know, run away with the win. That's true. Yeah. Possibility. Definite possibility. I would have... I would have think about keeping the brand. There's so much value in, in it, in especially in those matchups. Yeah. With a single abuse of surgeon, you just have so much to do. Yeah, or even if you pick up a dark p dark peddler, it allows you to pick up mm -hmm. potentially Ooh. two power overwhelmings. Mali goes, whoa! And Antonidas in the same deck, like this is packing every single gun possible. Yeah, so Chonger definitely built his lineup to play favorably against control lists because the Malagos Freeze Mage does better against slower lists because you yes. have more maximum potential bursts. And same with Murloc Paladin. Murloc Paladin punishes control because, you know, inevitably you're going to be able to do 70 damage. That's just what happens with Murloc Paladin if you're given the time. So uh, this, this Freeze Mage deck might be punished a little harder by Zio, I, th I feel. Might be the case. And look at that, there's the Void Caller into Doomguard. That's gonna be painful. Yeah. Even though there's no Ice Block, but there are no easy clears for for Chonger. Like, there's the Dooms here, but there's the First Nova. Yeah. The single Iceland doesn't really change that much. <laughs> and, and Doomsayer, even if he just plays Doomsayer here, time just allows it to go off. It puts six more power onto the board. Yep. Well, I don't see an easy option. The admin was telling Chonger, hey man, anything can happen only works if you play <laughs> Murlocs. <laughs> and he's like, oh yeah, okay, oh, thank thanks. you. Th thank you. Now I know. And knowing is half the battle. Yeah. Gee, oh, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Did you watch it? Of course. Second Doom God, what is happening? Yeah. It's pretty good because uh, the first one will be able to come out with the Void Car when it inevitably dies. Well, I don't know. Roaring Thor. This is what we talked about earlier, right? Yeah. Th when we saw the first version with the double Roaring Torches yeah. of the mage, I was like, mm, I don't like double Roaring Torches. Uh, sorry, f um, the first stage of the torch. Um, what is the name? Forgotten Torch. Forgotten Torch. Because it adds actually a layer on your deck. Yeah which makes uh, less possible to draw cards you know, that you need at yeah. the time. And as, as we can see, that wasn't really helpful. Yeah. Do you want to Iceland that? You I can't drop the don't here. even know. Yeah. You might want to wait another turn, see if you can get the board to overextend, and then hope you can draw into a, uh, a Frost Nova or maybe even a Blizzard to buy yourself some time in order to play the Doomsayer. But hey, 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 hey. <sighs> This game is already starting to look like it's snowballing out of control. Yep. Definitely doesn't look good for Chonger. Wow. That's not an easy decision. I mean, you can play the Doomsayer just to have a 7 HP heal. Yeah. The Iceland does the same, but it heals for 5, basically. Yeah. Uh, but less value later on, I, I suppose. Uh, I mean, it, it's more damage with Malagos, but at, at this point, I just don't see any way that he's going to be able to play the Malagos this game. Second Urban or Pelvis Fitter? 
Uh, sorry, Pilot of Shredder, Hunter Creeper. Um, hmm. Hunter Creepers can come from Pilot of Shredders. Mm, that's true. Oh, oh, there's a Blizzard, but... The Blizzard adds 6 HP on the board anyway. And 6 is attack as well, so... Not really that great. Peddler, which can add PO for 6. Your opponent is at 21, has nice block. Uh, I would say you play the Peddler first. Oh, you draw first. Draw first. Because even if you get like 1 HP spell or minion from the Dark Peddler, it doesn't really change your plans. Yeah. So I would say tap first, see what you get. Maybe it's a Bran. And if it's a Bran... Oh, just going to give up the Dark Peddler to make for a stronger board. Interesting. Yeah, this this is uh, you know, more proactive. You're setting up for a next turn lethal. I like this. Given that your opponent doesn't have a board clear and flame strike here is not really that helpful. Yeah, it, flame strike basically just takes four damage away from the board. It doesn't clear either doom guard. It kills the the Nerubian, the defender of Argus, and the two spectral spiders. But then it, it, it puts the extra four damage. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Chong is going to have to pick up a Frost Nova here if he wants a he chance to stay alive. He has a Blizzard for next turn, uh, but doesn't necessarily help him this turn because the Ice Block will be popped, and then you can't play another Ice Block with the Blizzard or Blizzard with the Doomsphere. So yeah. I like this because you know that your ice block is getting popped anyway yeah but you need to do so you need to do something to avoid a low tab yeah and to just play doomsayer blizzard next turn yeah and ping face of course definitely the right choice uh, just to make sure that low tab is not going to come down like you said or the owl or the owl not that it would matter I, it actually matters because you can silence your own minion and attack into your opponent's face and he is just dead Oh, oh! You're saying for the next turn, like after there's a freeze, a freeze comes out. I mean, this turn even. Like, if there will be a Doomseer Blizzard and there will be one space on the board, that's game for Tom because he silences his own minion and just attacks. Bro. Yeah, Blizzard would kill off two minions anyway. Oh yeah, correct. What I'm talking about? Oh Jesus! <laughs> it's hot in he hot in here. It is. Casting on hard mode. Well, that's game. But Tom needs to see it. Does he see it? Does he grab it instantly? <laughs> yeah. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah, he has yes, to. he does. It. Tom's been around the block more than a few times, and that is Tom taking the series three to zero. Another wow. very quick, very quick sweep. We have some sprints. Yeah, here. we do. Really, and the anything can happen for ten mana with zero advantage. Yeah, was kind of weird. Uh, that's the first time I actually saw it. I think. I, I've never. I don't think I've ever seen it be played without Murlocs. It just d it does nothing. Like, it doesn't even make an animation. <laughs> it's like, I'll you, throw you this. Just, <laughs> you just play it, yeah. It, even the coin has a more, like, extravagant animation than that. And there you can see Tom's uh, road to victory against Chonger, securing a spot in the round of eight winners. Round of eight winners bracket is, uh, is really close to winning the whole event. Yeah. And... Um, for Chonga, it's not the end of the road because he's now knocked down to the loser's bracket. But uh, now his road is extended by two more matches. Yeah. Uh, which, uh, at the end of a long day like this, or a long weekend like this, since you know some of those matches will be played mm -hmm. tomorrow, you know, that can be a pretty grueling, pretty grueling time to have to play through a lot of loser's bracket. Yeah. Well, you know, most of those players are actually uh, veterans of uh, CCGs in general. True. Yeah. And they're even... Um, I'm I'm guessing that they they w they are more happy about those amounts of rounds than an example when you compare it to Magic or yeah. other card games which ha which have like nine ten rounds yeah. each day and it, this takes like twelve thirteen hours yeah. of constant playing yeah. you have no breaks yeah well this is sort of a similar environment to that because of how many rounds we're gonna have to play but uh, that's gonna do it for that series big congratulations to Tom we'll have to see how Chong is gonna do as we follow his path through the lower bracket. And uh, we are going to move to another round of 16 winners match. But before we do that, we are going to have to go to a little bit of a break, about a 15-minute break before we jump in the next match. So uh, don't go anywhere, guys. More Hearthstone Singapore Major action will continue right after this break.